everyone. It's me, Leslie Rogowski. Haven't done a faced book live in a while, but uh, back on the horse. As my partner in crime, Leslie Pope, says, she is standing by to help and uh, answer any questions. But so today, let's just get into it. I designed these earrings using Paisley Duos, mini gem duos, and some seed beads. And I mean, as you guys know, limitless color combinations available. Ta -da. These were so much fun to make. Uh, this version, I used two different color mini gems. And the others I used single colors. So overall, the materials that you need to make these earrings, it's really kind of a stash buster. You're going to need Paisley Duos, O beads, mini gem duos, and you want to make sure when you're working these that you keep the domed side facing up. Then you also have size 11 seed beads. Those are all the beads. Then you need two closed jump rings, a pair of ear wires. I use size 12 beading needles so I don't have problems getting through the 11s. And I use Fireline, six pound Fireline, but you can also use Nymo D is fine for these. Even though the Nymo has a little bit of stretch to it, earrings don't have a lot of tension or friction. So you're going to be able to use matching colors, colors to blend into the background. All right, let's get started. Oh, and also, of course, a thread zap or a snip for your thread. So there we go. So to start off, you want to make sure always when you're working with uh, multiple hole beads, you want to make sure all the holes in your beads are clear before you use them. Uh, nothing could be worse than getting partway through a step and realizing that one of your beads is clogged and then you have to take everything out that you just sewed back to that bead and replace the bead. So check all your beads. And we're going to start with the um, Paisley Duos eight around to make your first whoops did I lose one nope that's an extra one so you're going to string eight paisley duos and you're going to string them through the concave tip side so paisley duos have a concave side and a convex side that curves out you have a tip side and a wide end side. So the instructions in the tutorial will tell you to string through the concave or convex side of the tip end or the wide end. And there's a diagram in the tutorial to help you. So you're gonna sew through your eight Paisley Duos. You're gonna sew through it again, which I'm gonna skip for the purposes of this demo. And then you're gonna tie them into a ring Weave enough tail just to weave in. Don't get it caught. Make sure the knot is between your paisley duos. And there's your starting blossom. So I'm just gonna double knot this since I'm not uh, sewing through it again. I don't want my little sample to come off and I am just gonna clip my little tail to be out of the way for now. All right, so there you go. Now. Going in the same direction, which is through the tip concave part first, you're gonna sew away from the knot. You don't ever wanna start a step up or another round directly from the knot. It, puts, it will put too much pressure on the knot. So you're gonna sew through the Paisley Duo. You can sew through one or two Paisley Duos from the concave side and you're gonna come out on the tip convex side. And I have you do this because we're gonna hide the thread to step up and sew through the outer holes of the Paisley Duo for this next step. 
and I want the thread to lie along the curve of the convex side. It hides it better. So it's coming from the knot through one or two paisley duos and then up and you're gonna reverse direction and sew through the outer, the convex wide side of a paisley duo in order to be ready to start your next round. So now we're gonna start with, we're gonna to wanna to make a piece that looks like this. And we're gonna have mini gem duos, O beads and seed beads sitting in between the paisley duos. So first I'm gonna pick up a gem duo and I'm gonna pick it up face up from the left hole cause I'm sewing this way. So I'm gonna pull that down. Now I'm gonna pick up an 11, an O, an 11, an O, and an 11. I have a lot of static on my mat today. 11, an O, an 11, an O, and an 11. So you have three 11s, spaced apart with the two O's. Now you're gonna sew back in through the other hole of that gem duo. Get in there. Like this. And pull the beads down to your little blossom. And you're gonna see that the O beads kind of cantilever out. You're gonna go sew through the next Paisley duo through the wide convex end. And you're gonna create this on here. Now you're gonna continue all the way around your blossom. So I can move on to my next stepped out sample. I love when I can do this. So I've come all the way around, adding these extra embellishments around the outside to sit in between the arches of the Paisley duos. And I'm gonna exit through the last Paisley duo, up through the gem duo and 111 in the next one. Can you see I'm not going through the O bead here, just the gem duo and the 11. Now for the next round, we're gonna add another round of the mini gem duos between the ones that we just added. And these are gonna sit sort of above each of the arch of the uh, Paisley duos. So in this case, for this round, we pick up, a, we're gonna reverse direction. So I'm gonna pick up a gem duo, make sure it's facing up. And this time I'm gonna go through what for me is the right side hole and I'm going to pick up three 11s. One, two, three. I'm going to sew into the open hole of the gem duo that I just strung and pull the beads down to the blossom. Okay, now I'm going to go around the circle, sewing into the 11, through the gem duo, under the gem duo, out through the other hole of the gem duo, and the 11. So through the 11, through the gem duo, and now you can see how that's in place right there. Now I'm gonna hide my thread to exit out. I'm gonna come under the mini gem duo and out through the 11 on the other side. Now you don't wanna to pull too, too tight here because you are gonna to have to maneuver your needle in between beads as you go around. So let me do that again for you. I'm gonna pick up 
a mini gem duo from the right hand hole, the side hole. Three 11s, three seed beads. Then I'm going to go back in the other mini gem duo hole. Get in there. Through the 11 and the gem duo next to it, working your way around. So you can see how these sit above the Paisley duos. And you're gonna do that all the way around so that it looks like this. You got that? Okay. Now for your last one, you're gonna come out Go in and around under the gem duos like you did so far, but you are going to come out through the 11 and the O bead this time because now we're at a point where we're going to start to add, we're going to add our little outside part, the peak of it, which is where your ear wire will go. And I'm going to work this through entirely. I don't have this stepped out so you guys can really understand. So you're coming out of that O bead right here. And now we're going to pick up some of these side little 11s and the Paisley duos to form the top. So the first thing that we, we're gonna do, here we go, is this part up here. This is what we're working on. So let's see, I'm going, so I'm coming out the O bead. Now I'm going to pick up, we have two Paisley duos and you want to make sure that they're back to back convex sides like this. It kind of forms a little sprout that comes out. We're going to sew through both of those from the concave side tip and then the convex side tip. So they look like that when they're strong. And in through the O bead on the other side. Okay, so now we have this. And we're going to go all the way around like we hid the thread under the gem duo as we worked our way around. We're going to do that again. And it's really, it's really quite nice how much the thread is hidden this way. So you're going to go through that 11 that's underneath. Through the gem duo. You can see why you need to check all those holes. Out through the other hole of the gem duo and the 11 and the O bead again. So you're kind of working your way around like this, adding beads as you are instructed. So now you have the two Paisley duos attached and we're gonna come out of the O bead and continue through the first two of the three seed beads that are on top of this mini gem duo off to the side. Make sure you don't get stuck on anything. There's a, gets a little thready, All right? Now we're gonna build the little side of seed beads coming out from here, whoops and come through, step up and come through the outer hole and start to add our finding attachment. So I'm gonna pick up two more seed beads and sew in the concave wide end side. So you have this little part here. Then we're gonna put a gem duo in between in that little sprout 
You're gonna make sure that it's face up, that the domed side is face up, and you're gonna go through what would be the hole, the bottom hole. And it fits in like this. All right. So out through the other Paisley Duo, convex wide end, so your gem duo sits really nice, it really fits right there in between the paisley duos. Just like that. Now my hands are sticking to all my O beads. Now we're going to complete the other side by picking up the two 11s like we added here, and this time we're going to go in to those first two beads on the other side. So you have those two beads. And I'm going to repeat my thread path now going through the gem duo, the seed beads, the gem duo to come out at the top of my first column of 11s for this attachment. So you go into the O bead and the 11, and you're just gonna circle around, repeating that existing thread path. Go through the gem duo. So you can see how my piece has a little bit of floppiness to it. That lets me get my needle in between the beads. Gives it a little folding room like this. Up through the other side, the seed, the O. Whoops, just stuck myself. I'm always trying to do more than one bead at a time, and sometimes you really need to take your time to get it through where you have to. You don't want to break any beads. Okay. Up through the O bead. This is just repeating the path that we just did before, a step or two behind. All right, and now we're gonna go through the first two of the 11s that are over this gem duo here and up through the two new ones. The idea is that we wanna come out at the gem duo at the top so we can attach the, um, the jump ring, uh, the closed ring for the ear finding. So I'm gonna go out through these two. and then up through the two that were added. Get in there. There's a lot of reflection off of these. I keep missing the hole. Right, that's one bead. Two. Now we're gonna go through the Paisley Duo and the Gem Duo. And we're gonna start to add beads to frame the Gem Duo. Okay. Let's see. All right. And I'm coming back around. Whoops, I have to add my beads. Sorry, forgot to pick them up. Here we go. So three little 11s frame the sides of the gem duo. So you're gonna do this and you're gonna do it to the other side. Pick up your three and go through the inner Paisley, uh, inner gem duo hole. You with me? Okay, now here's a little trick. Leslie Pope likes to do this a lot. What we wanna do for just a little 
extra detail is we want to make these middle 11s here pop out. So I'm going to sew through, I'm coming out of the gem duo. I'm going to sew through the first and third size 11s. I'll show you this when I get it. So you're just going to sew through the first one. Skip the middle one and sew through the next one. And when you give a tug on this, it's going to pull them together and see how it made that little bead pop out right there. So easy and effective. Okay, now before I go and finish the next side, I'm going to add my jump ring. So I'm picking up another size 11 and one closed ring. I always like to hold my ring because the 11s will slide through it and I don't want my 11 to come above my ring. I want it to stay right here and I'm going to sew right back through that, that pinnacle bead, we'll call it. That's going to keep your jump ring on top of the gem duo. Now you can go back in the other side and remember to skip that middle 11. You're going to sew back into the 11, first 11 and the third 11 and skip that middle one to make that pop out. It's just a little extra detail. Can you skip it? Sure, but it gives it a nice shape. All right, go through that 11. Don't get your ring caught. There we go. Now, basically you're done. Now what you have to do is repeat the thread pass as the tutorial says, and then you're gonna weave your thread in and end it. So I'm just gonna weave my thread back through existing thread paths. From here, I usually like to go, after I've gone around this again, I'm gonna go back through the convex side of the paisley and pull that snug and weave my thread back into the body of the piece where I can easily hide it. Half hitch it between some beads in a discreet place and trim. Then I like these little fish hook earrings because they're very clean and minimal and I can with my fingers open that up, slide it right into the closed ring. And there you go. Paisley Blossom and so many colors that you can use. Holy cow, right? So that's it, you guys. That is my Paisley Blossom Springtime Earrings. Remember that you can find Paisley Duos, Mini Gem Duos, Size 11s, everything, all, along with other quality beadsmith beads, tools, and supplies at your favorite bead reseller. You can find us on the Beadsmith on Facebook. You can find us on Instagram. And of course, our I Love Beads library, where you can find free tutorials, including this one, divided by the bead type. So you can go to that website and find things yourself. Happy beading. We love you. And we love beads. Thanks to Leslie Pope again for monitoring things. I hope she was able to answer any questions. Paisley Blossom earrings, you guys. Have fun. Happy spring. Bye.